We're going to use um, Huck structures and blocks and use section assembly to define the different blocks so that we can arrange them in different ways to quickly generate patterns without a lot of effort. So using this will be an eight shaft hook using five thread hooks. With eight shafts, you can get six blocks. So we'll first enter the threading, and this is pretty standard stuff. Uh, so we're going to do two, three, two, three, two. That's one block. At one, four, one, four, one, two, five, two, five, two, one, six, one, six, one, two, seven, two, seven, two, one, eight, one, eight, one. And then at the end, we'll probably do some plain weave sections that we can use, a 2-1 and a 1-2. So if you've used Huck at all in Huck Lace, this should look fairly familiar to you. The blocks, with the five thread blocks, um, you'll see that they all have a 2 or a 1 alternating. And you can put any of these in sequence as long as they're not a 2 block or a 1 block side by side. They can't be adjacent or it wouldn't work. So there's the threading, and we can go on if we want to under design and section marker. We can go ahead and mark these sections. There's one. So I'm just dragging across them, and if you make a mistake, you can always edit it or delete it. Just clicking and dragging, and I'll drag these, the 2-1 and the 1-2, in case we want to use those. Whoops, see, now there's an example. I can right-click, delete it. And let me try to drag that again and select it. Okay, there we go. Now, I, I don't, the, the default names, um, I'm going to drag this marker. See how that icon changes? I can drag that down. So the default one's just number section 1, etc. But since I kind of like to think in terms of the, uh, a, B, C, D, E, F blocks. I'm going to uh, just double click. I'll rename them. Section named E. Notice that location. That's the threading locations up here where you see the numbers. And you, of course, you can hover and see the numbers there if you ever need that. And this would be this funny little section here. This two thread was, I'll call it plain two one. And this is plain one two. Okay. So the next thing we'll do is I'm going to enter a tie up. Uh, if you don't forget, you want your the section marker is a tool, so you might need to go back and select your your straight draw before you start entering the tie up. Otherwise it won't do anything when you click and tie up. Now this just happens to be one that I've either done before or seen in a book, so I know the tie up I'm going to start with. One of the cool things about Huck is you can play with the tie up once you get done to change how your, how your different blocks are um, selected in every pick. You can get some really interesting things. Okay, so after 257, we'll do 146, 2358, 147. And then um, in Huck, you're kind of alternating basically a plain weed treadle after every pattern uh, treadle. So I actually need to add two more, two more treadles here. So I'm going to go into Project, Project Information, and um, Shafts and Treadles, I need 10. Alright, so on this one, I'm going to do one, three, uh, five, seven. My odd shafts, and this one I'll do my even shafts for two, four, six, eight. Okay. So next, I'm going to enter some treadling blocks, just like I did with the um, with the the threading blocks. In this case, uh, on treadle, uh, starting my first one, I'm going to do a one nine one nine one. Okay, now we're entering the treadling. I actually typed off the screen where I couldn't see what I was doing. So it's easy to get in a rhythm with that. So notice that I'm alternating um, 
Okay, now I have entered the treadling and I need to mark those. So I'll go back into design, section marker, and let's pull this up right here. And when you're marking sections, it doesn't matter if you have the section assembly panel open or not, but sometimes I like to have it open. So I'm going to quickly drag down and mark these. scroll bar and slide up a little bit. And again, the point of marking all these sections is once they're named and marked, we can create groups and design cloth repeating any of these as many times as we want uh, to get the cloth at the right size we want and get the patterning like we like. And I can also um, do some plain weave too if I want to. And the other thing, now notice I've got the section marker tool so I need to go get that straight draw tool if I'm going to add, and I'll close that panel if I want to add anything else, but I could add a plain weave section like that and mark that to use as well. But in interest of time, let's now go into section assembly. Now one thing that I didn't do was rename my weft section. See they're just still one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We can rename them or leave them as is. It really doesn't matter. So let's go back into our threading and let's add a group. You can't so the things up at the top are available sections down at the bottom. That's where you're going to assemble um, a design that you want to generate. So I, the first thing you always have to do is add a group. Then you can click to select and start dragging down what you want. Do A, B. We'll do something simple here. B and F. And if I hit refresh, I can see I've got a thread count, the width count of this little repeat I've done. So it's not very wide at two and a half inches. And that's where really the, uh, you know, I can, if I repeat that twice and hit refresh, now I've got five inches. So let's go to the weft and let's do the similar thing. Let's add a group. And you can have as many groups as you want. You can reorder groups. You can uh, have repeats on groups. You can have repeats on sections. And then, of course, generate very quickly and see what the impact is. And if you don't like it, you just close it and try again. Now, look in that section. I dragged and dropped it where I really didn't mean to. So I can drag it down where I originally intended to have it. So now, and remember with these, if you want more visibility, you can always, you've got scroll bars and you have a divider here. And when you hover, that icon changes shape so that you can change the divider length. I can do things with color on Warp and Weft. You can enable color assembly so you can actually assemble groups of colors to use that are independent of the weave structure, which is very useful sometimes for some interesting designs. Or you can just leave the default, which is from the drawdown. In this case, it's just black and white. So let's see what we've got here. Before we do, we really should save. Um, let's save this as, we'll call it Huck Master. And I usually like to name my section assembly files with the word master because it keeps me from getting confused between my generated designs and the master files where I have sections that I'm going to use. So right now, if we hit go, let's see what we've done. So this is what we've done. I'm going to minimize that. So at that point, if I wanted to, I could start designing with this or I can control W and go right back to my master and do some more things here. Like uh, maybe I wanted to do that, more repeats. Maybe I wanted to add a group um, and do some plain weave before I start uh, 
some plain threads before I start with my threading. Now if I wanted to do that, this starts with a 2, so I probably want to do this group um, first, the 2-1 group. So I'm going to go down here on my plain wig group. Now where did that go? I can collapse this. So I'm going to reorder the one that I've got all my huck in to 200 because I want my other one to be first. And then on the, and I'm going to, what did I say, 2-1 that I wanted. So I'm going to take this section and drag it into here. And I could either put my repeats on the group or on the, the actual section. It doesn't matter. But let's just repeat that four times. So now when I refresh, I can see that I've got 10.6 inches in width. And ideally, I'd probably want to put some plain weave on the end too, but let's just see. So now you can see that I have some plain weave before the hook units start. And that's what I've got so far. And similarly, you can do the same thing, of course, with your treadling doing plain weave sections, organizing the blocks differently, repeating them, groups of them, multiple times. Or you can start playing in here too, and you can start seeing the impact of changing your tie up. Or you can do the traditional things at this point and just be on your own and away from the master um, if, you, if you want to. I just need to leave this 2121 intact or it which I think I must have messed it up there. So that that looks structurally sound anyway. And remember there are all kinds of things like at this point in time, you're, you can still, when you're not, I'm in the generated assembly file right now, so I can use all those features that I normally would when working on a design. Like I can repeat the weft three times, and I can repeat the warp another one. And, and it took over the number the picks per inch that I'd set so I can see the impact of these repeats. I could do it 32 inches wide and this is, let's get it, now it's 33 inches long if I apply it. Of course that's, that's what I've done. And at this point in time it does not have a name. It's, uh, and if you see the default name is WIF Assembly, it's abbreviated. So if I do a save as, at that point in time I've got a, a WIF that I can name anything I want. Hook, uh, hook sample, misspell sample, but you get the idea. So um, that's kind of how I can close that window. I can go back to my master. I can make changes or whatever, hit go and generate another. So that's uh, what I wanted to show you now with uh, Hook Box. Thanks for watching.